heaven? What will it be like? You gotta know those things before you can, you start preaching. If you don't know those things, what the heck are you preaching about? I, I, God tells you where you go when you die. The church, oh no, 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 that's not true. Okay, I'm telling you. And you know, you know why you're having problem, you young man? It's because, and, and you, it's not your fault. You be lied to and you believe that, you believe that. And then you have a French guy with a French accent that barely can't read and shows you different. Now you're going to bend from this way. It's hard. You've been brainwashed to believe a bunch of lies. Jesus tells Adam what's going to happen to him because he broke God's laws. He told him. Maybe he lied to him. Let's look what he says. I'm going to turn there myself. Genesis 3. Uh, in verse say in verse uh, um, 16, he gives them their punishment. And listen, I said this before a long, long time ago. I'm going to say it again. Nobody going to prove me wrong. Nobody. But it might bother you what I'm going to say, especially you. The first one to... Uh, a, 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 a human being comes from a woman. Right? Oh, you can't have a baby, right? I hope not. <laughs> Neither can you. Okay? But the first one to have, it was a man. Not a woman. Now I'll quote you the verse. And if you're curious, look into it. The, woman, the man is not of the woman, but the woman is of the man. You ever read that? God saw at Adam, he was lonely. There was both in him. There was Adam and there was Eve. And he took Eve out of Adam. Prove me wrong. So the first one to have a human being was a, a man, not a woman. That's, that's not what I'm going to talk about. And then they start, and you know, people don't believe God. God says the woman is of the man. She came out of the man. Are you going to say something? I know it don't make sense, but that's what the Bible says. <clears throat> One guy said to me, a pastor said to me, you mean I didn't believe, you believe everything the Bible says? I said absolutely. You don't know because you don't have a clue what the Bible says. The Old Testament is the law. The book of Ecclesiastes is the man that walks under the sun. The New Testament is grace and the Spirit of God, and we are under a total different covenant. Total different. Now, he starts giving them the punishment. He says to the woman, you, because of what you did, he said, you will bear children with much pain. Is that true? Yeah. And your desire will be to your husband. He will rule over you. That's the law. And this, people are still under the law. You better be on the subjection to me. Bunch of fruitcake. <clears throat> then he says to Adam, you, your punishment. That's why a, a welfare recipient eh? recipient is not of God. God said to the man, you will ruin your bread by the sweat of your brow until the day you die. Okay? Now go to verse 19. In the sweat of your face, face thou shalt eat bread. Listen, you turkey. You've been in the Garden of Eden and everything was welfare stuff. Everything was free. But... Yeah? yeah. Well, Correct me, yeah. please. No, no. I'll <laughs> kneel down and repent. But now you're going to work, okay? You turkey. Now you're going to work. You didn't have to before, but now you're going to work. And so it is with God today. He gives us His promise, and you don't do it, you're going to pay for it. <clears throat> you're going to win. Listen, now this is the real important part. You will win your bread by the sweat of your brow until you go back to the ground from whence you've come. 
He didn't say you will win your bread by the sweat of your brow until you get back to heaven. He didn't say that until you go back to where you come from. You come from the earth, I'm putting you back there. Did you ever hear me preach on that? Yes. If you did this a heck of a long time ago. Long time ago. Long time. Right at the beginning, uh, 12 yes. years ago, I think I spoke about that. Mm -hmm. So, that is your first clue where you're going. Okay? <clears throat> Turn to Second King. Let's find out where the, if David, David a man after God's own heart. Let's see where he went. A man that did many things wrong, but he loved the Lord. So forget about trying to witness, trying to be good. Let the Lord work that work in you. That's what, and listen, God, I'm, really, and I'm not trying to promote you, but I'm blessed how well you're doing. How there's people, I won't mention any name, were with me 10 years, but could not talk. They talked nice. They talked nicer than you. But it was empty. It words, vain words, didn't mean anything. So it's not how good you speak. It's what comes out that counts. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 10. If, if you're there, this is, a, this is why. You know what? If you write down the verse that I gave, you can, on that subject, you can face any pastor you want. Did you hear me? Write the verse that I'm giving you, and when the pastor comes and tells you, oh, but he's going to be with the Lord. Oh, really? Can you show me that verse, please? Now, I'll show you where we go when we die. And I mean, there's hundreds of verses, I'll just give you a few. Okay. <clears throat> verse 10. Say, First King. Chapter 2, verse 10. So David slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. So where, did, where is David today? He's with his father at the same place. And I'll show you another verse that says that too in the New Testament. So David was buried. The word, so he's repeating himself. Here's what I want you to learn. The word sleep, so lots of time means He's dead. Okay? He said, David slept with his father. Oh, you didn't understand that. Oh, and he was buried. So, for you to really understand what. It's so simple. My God. A child can understand that. <clears throat> okay, let's go to the. Let's go, I think, to that verse. Second, Second Timothy. Second Timothy, chapter 4. Yeah. You see? I just want to show you verse instead of preaching a message and just one after the other. Chapter 4, verse, um, let's start at verse 5. <clears throat> 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. But watch thou, don't go ahead of me. Follow with me because you're going to learn if you do that. If you, then you'll see something and you're not listening anymore to what I'm telling you. And it's important that you listen to what I'm telling you. But watch thou in all things. Watch what? Watch people around you that are trying to, Satan is trying and is using people to deceive you. So he's telling us to watch. Okay? Watch in all things. That means everything. Be sober. Endure affliction. So there, it's not a free Endure affliction. The day you start speaking God's word, put me to the test. People that really like you can't stand you no more. When you say, oh, where does it say that? Or oh, right away. Hmm. And, so, and when you love, you want people to like you. I always wanted people to like me. But because of the gospel, they hate me. Most of them. Not everybody. Endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. A real evangelist from God. One that does not please man. One that is motive is not to build up a big church. Do the work of a where am I? Do the work of an of an evangelist. Make listen. Listen, this is important here. 
I want you to become a teacher like this here. Make proof of what you do. Prove what you're doing. Is that what it's saying? Okay. I, I don't know if you guys believe that. Read it. Yeah, read it. I know it's there. It read make, it. make full proof of thy ministry. Make full proof of your ministry. You say you're a child of God. Well, in Mark chapter 16, these signs shall follow the believer. In my name, they will cast out devil. They will speak with new tongue. They will lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. That's proving your ministry. That's what proving your ministry is. Oh, I'm a Christian, but nothing ever happens. Tell that to um, Saddam Hussein. <clears throat> Make full proof of your ministry. Prove what you say, man. You say that God, oh, somebody's got a headache and I pray. I'm not saying God cannot answer little stuff, stuff like that. God can do anything. But make proof of what you say. Oh, I believe God heals. I believe God set captive free. When did it happen in your life? Well, it never happened. That's not proof. I have proven to you, since you know me, the ministry that God has given to me. You need to do the same thing. Paul knew he's, going, he's not going to heaven. Is that going to affect you or what? I give you the verse, mark it down. Paul knew he was not going to heaven. He says, now he says, I'm ready to be offered. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And there is now laid for me a crown of righteous. There is one lane for me. Not now, but there is one coming up. For them that love is appearance. Mm -hmm. When Christ comes back, that's when something can happen. There is a crown of righteous lane for me. But not only for me. For them that love all this appearance. But I'll read it. Make sure. I'm now ready to be offered. I mean, hey. They had him. The chopping block is right there. For him. Waiting for him. He says, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Now there's a crown of righteous waiting for me. So I'm ready to be offered. I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I know I'm going to die now. I hate to leave you guys. But I'm going to die. They're going to kill me. But I have finished my course. I have finished what God has given to me. And I can say boldly that since God put me behind the pulpit, I have done everything to deliver the gospel of Jesus Christ to you. I have done everything. Mm -hmm. I have fought a good fight. Indeed, I ever. He says, you know what? I have fought a good fight. If you fight against false doctrine, you're not fighting the fight of faith. You're fighting the fight of man. But he says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And now there's a crown of righteous waiting for me. But not only for me, for them that will love his appearance when he comes back. Do you see that Paul then knew he was not going to heaven? To say, when he comes back, well, he has not come back yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Acts 2, are you there? Verse 29. Yeah, Acts 2, 29. I think it is. Yeah. yeah. 2, 29. Men and brethren, <coughs> let me speak freely unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and gone to heaven. That what it says? <coughs> I mean, what the heck kind of Bible do people read out of? Help, can you help me to tell me what kind of Bible? <laughs> no, no, but it's really. Like, what's the excuse? What is going to be the... He says, he says, listen, okay, I'm going to tell you what he's saying. I even do you understand the last of it. Val, I need to say something to you, but I, you might get mad at me. So, if you're mad at me, it stops me from really telling you the truth. So, let me speak to you freely. You see? <clears throat> like here this morning, I feel to speak to you freely. 
But if I'm in some church, then some will fight me like crazy. Let me speak to you freely. Like, don't get mad at me. <coughs> David, David is dead. You think, for him to make a statement like that, there was people then that believed he was going to heaven. Yeah. And he was playing the, the fiddle with Peter or something. He said, let me talk to you freely. He said, he is both dead and buried. Not dead and gone to heaven. So, oh, so I don't have to go there, but write it down. John 3, 3. Jesus himself said, no man is gone to heaven. They know John 3.16, but they don't know what John 3.13 says. And John 3.13 says, Jesus said, you know what? I was in heaven and there's nobody from the human race there. Praise the Lord for him evermore. Go to Psalms. I think we were there already. Go to Psalms. Okay? 146. Now, I want to tell you, don't Put your trust in, you know, listen to me. You guys all like me. Okay? But I found a new girlfriend. And I'm leaving my wife. And my wife comes and sees you and she's crying. Okay, you're mad at me? Especially her. Okay, you're mad at me? Where would that stop you from serving the Lord? If everything else I said is true, why would that stop you? That's why he says, put your confidence in no man. Because man can, can let you down. Don't trust man. I give you the verse, believe it. Never mind what I do with my life, just none of your business. I'm not, I'm not spending on, planning on leaving my wife because she's such a suck. I mean, she cries all the time, right? I don't want to hurt sweet. Okay. Now, I said it all. Okay. Put your trust in no man. Because man will fail you. Man makes mistakes. Man is not perfect. And the place in the Bible, he said, I was talking about somebody I knew lately that says, Boy, you know what? This guy is he's broke. He's got no money. And he's begging for money. I said, Listen, believe what he says. That's my brother I'm talking about. I said, believe what he says, but don't do what he does. <coughs> do you see? Because my brother, I've, I've seen God really work. Why does he do that? I don't know. So, I don't throw the... I mean, if, if a baby, you give him a bat, I'm sure some of you have, uh, women have, have experienced giving a bat to a baby, and all of a sudden he pees all over you and all over the bathtub. He pees all over the place. You don't take the bat. The bass and then put outside with the kid. You throw the water out, but you keep the kid. <laughs> right? Yep. You don't want to keep the kid. Okay? But so it is. Prove all things and all fast that that which is good. A person can be nowhere, but say something that is true. I'm sure he said something that was true this morning when he came. I mean, but some other things is wrong. But don't worry about that. Prove all, except what you believe is true, and don't worry about the rest. That's all. <clears throat> okay. So, okay. Put you, put not your trust in prince, nor in the son of man. The son of man here is you. It's not God. Ecclesiastes, the son of man, is talking about the man that walks under the sun. That's he's called the son of man in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, it's talking about Jesus. Okay. Otherwise it would be contradicting itself. Put not your trust in prince, nor in the son of man, in whom there is no help. There's no help in trusting a man. Is now here it is. Here it is. Is he going to heaven? His bread goes forth. His bread. The last bread comes out of his mouth. His bread goes forth. He returns to the earth. In that very day, is thought perish. Why do I, I don't need to explain that to you? I mean, it's so plain. What happens? Okay, write it down. <clears throat> okay, 
go back to one Psalm, Psalms 115, 115, verse 17. Okay. People that believe you when you go to heaven, well, if they all go to heaven, they're playing, they're worshiping God. The Bible said the dead are not praising the Lord. David is not praising the Lord. Paul is not praising the Lord. John is not praising the Lord. They're all waiting for the resurrection. The dead praise not the Lord. Neither does anybody that goes into silence. So that's the number two thing. The dead praise not the Lord. Okay? Neither does anybody that goes into silence. Okay? The dead will praise the Lord when Christ comes back. The dead in Christ shall rise first. But the dead, either bad or good, they don't praise the Lord. They're dead. Until everything's going to start up. People have Judo, this chariot, and they don't know nothing about it. In hell, and okay, he's been burning now for 3,000 years. And you're going to start 4,000 years, uh, 4, 000, 2,000 years after. You know something? Things that don't make sense, don't make sense. That's why I had a pastor beside me teaching me the Bible. And pastor on one side, the Holy Spirit on the other side. He telling me it's not true what he's saying. That's what happened to me. Job. Let's go to Job. Job 7, verse 21. You know what? Me, stuff like that, when I'm looking for people to talk to me about the Lord. Oh man, this was... This was riches. Do you feel like that? Do you feel this is riches? What you're hearing? Money cannot buy that. It's riches. To find out what I was told, scared to death, to die, so I would see three words before I went to bed. Lord bless me and watch that I don't choke. And I hope you're there when I wake up. Something like that every night. But once you know the truth, you don't do stuff like that. I bow it to God yesterday, today, and forever. I'm a prisoner. Okay. Job chapter 7. Listen to what it says here. Verse 21. Everybody's there? <clears throat> Now this is Job. And why dost thou not pardon my transgression? How come you can't pardon my sin? The sins were not pardoned until Jesus Christ died on the cross. Okay? He is asking. And anyone that is not of God will and does it does it through the church and through the pastor of how to get sin. After they do that, most of them, sometimes they could really get the Lord can touch them. But most of the time, they, 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 were, they, they were born again in sin, they keep sinning after. So nothing changes. And they don't know that nothing, your freshness is supposed to change. What needs to happen is you're in a man, and a man is born, and he's going to start growing. Don't starve him. So he can keep growing. And when he keeps growing, then he's going to start manifesting himself once he's fully grown. If he, once he's fully grown, if he's not fully grown, he will not manifest himself. He can't, the baby, didn't have a chance to grow. Many are called, but few are chosen. Is that ever true? Millions of people were called. They, they had the touch from God, but then they died. If you come and work for me, I give you a job to, to do what you're typing, and you're all excited, but you type only for one day, I'm going to fire you. Because I, call, you I called you for a job. I've called a hundred of them, only five turns out that, that they all turn out, they all were touched, but only five really can do the job. Many are called. But few are chosen. Why is that? Because they don't do what I called them for. I, I was a man that, uh, of authority that hired people all the time. One guy I fired before he started. <clears throat> I told him Monday morning, go to the job, wait for me. I'm busy with the other crews. Wait for me. 
I get a phone call from one of the foremen on the job. He said, did you hire him? I said, no. I said, why? Well, he's done the whole working. I said, tell him to get out of the hole until I get there. I told him to stand there, wait for me till I come. So he got out of the hole when I got there. I said, you go home. He says, why? What did I tell you? I told you to wait for me. You're down the hole. You're not even covered by compensation. You don't want to listen? Now you won't listen after you go home. I don't need a guy like you. You see, many are called, but the one that are chosen is the one you have it all. You have a chance to say, "Hey, you know what, Lord, make me more hungry for you." You know, I want to worship you like Adam is talking about. I want that, Lord, and it's gonna happen for you. That's right. Okay. <clears throat> why and why does thou? Okay, and why does Thou not pardon my transgression and take away my iniquity. For now shall I sleep. You know what? I'm ready to die. You have been good to me. I love you. But my sins have not been forgiven. My sins are forgiven. I'm under grace. Here is Job, a man that God said to the devil. God's talking to the devil. He says, have you considered my servant Job? God called Job his servant. A man that God loved. And God says to the devil, have you considered him? Well, he said, take your hands off of him and I'll show you what I mean. He'll curse you to your face. And he did all that and Job didn't. Yet Job was still in his sin. That's what I want you to know here. The difference between grace and the law. And every, most people are under the law. They think they're saved. When you're saved, you will move by the Spirit of God. And you are going to fulfill His promises that He told you what to do. There, there's no mistake in that. <clears throat> Is it ever easy to preach? Oh my God. Okay. And take away, He says, and, thou sh and, and why does that not par pardon my transgression? Because the time is not yet. I have not died yet for you, my boy. And taking away my sin. I see that you're going to do that, but no, I'm going to die. I'm going to go in the grave. I'm going to be buried with my sins. But Jesus, when he, he went into the lower region, when he died, he went in the lower region and spoke to the dead. And I'll tell you something, many took the opportunity to had the, the salvation of God. That's exciting. That's exciting. If you, I feel the Lord, you know, for God to give, the, that's why poor Job couldn't save himself. Somebody said, okay, repeat the sinner's prayers, Job. Give your heart to Jesus, okay? Jesus has not died. When he died, that gift is for you. You don't have to do nothing. Just believe. I'll draw you. Believe who's drawing. And you got it. they got to make it so hard for you that you don't know what to do. And then after they say you're saved, you know nothing. I told you before, this guy's going to Bible study. I said, where? Oh, Tennessee somewhere. For how long? Five years. Oh, God. No, I said. After you come back, come and see me. I'll show you you learn nothing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely nothing. Okay, he was encouraged that guy, but he didn't go. Good! <laughs> Good! I said, spend, I've said that since I know you. Spend a month with me, and I don't care if you, you say you've been a Christian for 30 years. You'll learn more in a month than you have in 30 years. So what the heck are you doing then? And it's not because I'm not trying to spend time with me. I've got God in my life. And God has taught me. Can't speak English good, but He taught me. And He gave me a good memory. And what I'm going to tell you is going to help your inner man. It's going to grow. It's going to be good. Why do you want you to pardon my transgression and take away my iniquity? For now I shall sleep in the dust. I'm not going to heaven. 
I will sleep in the dust. Good. Just about finished. And thou shalt see. Look, 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 look what he said. Look what he said. I like that. Now he's talking to God. And there's probably, probably people around. Why did you, you know, you didn't pardon me for my iniquity. I'm going to sleep in the dust of the earth with my sin. And some of you will look for me and will not find me. Why? Because he's buried. Because he's buried. That's what they, they don't know where he is. By what he said, by what he saying, some people will be looking for him. But he, that's it. Okay, one more verse. And I will let you have coffee. Okay, Job 14. No, Job 7. Did I go to Job 7? Yes, you did. And did I go to Job 14, 21 and 22? No. Oh, 14, 21. Okay, okay. This is important here. A son, I'm going to show you, Val. Every time I do something like that, I'm going to mention hmm. your name. Watch how you study the Bible. God taught me that. I'm going to give you a verse you will not understand. If I didn't tell you, you will not understand. I'm warning you. And if you did understand, prove me wrong. Look what he says here. <clears throat> a son, verse 21, are you there? A yeah. son comes to honor and he knows it not. And they are brought low, but he perceives it not. And because of what I said, you maybe will know. You pre you, but he perceived it not of them, not of them. But his flesh upon him shall have pain, and his soul within him shall mourn. Wow. Okay. Watch this, and then, then when you're going to read it, you're going to see how much it is. You come to a grave. Okay? Jesus said to the scribes and Pharisees, he said, <coughs> You are as grave that appears not. And the men that walk over you are not aware of you. What is he talking about? He's in the New Testament in Matthew 23. He said, You scribes and you Pharisees, you good for nothing scum. You are like a grave that don't appear. And the men that walk over you are not aware of you. So what is he saying? You know a, a person that's buried but there's no stone? No, there's no stone. Well, men that walk over there, they don't know there was, there was somebody dead there. Maybe they would have went around. So what was he saying? He said, you, you Pharisees. He's using an illustration of them. How bad they are. You are like a grave. You're empty. You're dead. You are. He said. Another place. He said. You scribes and Pharisees, and you uh, you compass sea and land to convert one proselyte, and then you make him twofold the child of hell. You scribes and Pharisees, and you are as dead bones, and the people that come around you are not aware of you, and you are full of hypocrisy and and accessible of it. Now you are as grave that appears not. And the one that they're not aware of you. If people, like anyone of you, like you, Deborah, that's been deceived all your life. If you would have only known that the pastor that was teaching you was like that grief. You need to understand what that's talking about. He was vain. He was dead. He had nothing. And God is telling them, those pastors, those Pharisees, people are not aware of you. If they would be aware of you, they change their course. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to explain. A son comes to honor him. Okay, and so, you know people that die, their family goes to the grave? You know that before? I don't know. Maybe if you know, you can have a Bible, really good, have a Bible study about it. But people that don't know God, People, when your loved one dies, and they're crying. They're crying. They have no hope. Mm -hmm. yeah. God says, you're crying because you don't believe in the resurrection. You don't believe in what I provided. You don't believe nothing. <coughs> so, 
I know people me, that died and their family, they go to the grave and they sit there and they talk. They talk to them. Okay? The Bible says the people that the people that come to the grave, that one in the grave doesn't know that. Yeah. Okay? He's there. And wait. <laughs> okay. His son comes to honor him. And he knows it not. Who knows it not? The one in the grave knows it not. Eh? He doesn't know. He's dead. And they are brought low. The person that is dead is brought low. But he perceives them not. He's in the grave. He doesn't perceive them. Now, change subject a little bit. Now them. And his, but his flesh, the one that's visiting the grave. <laughs> okay? But his flesh upon him shall have pain. I'm so sorry, Dad, that you died. I miss you. I'll never see you again. I'm in pain. He doesn't know nothing about him. He's talking. He's full of pain because he has no faith in God and in the resurrection of God. None. But his flesh upon him shall have pain. It's not talking about the guy in the grave because he has no more flesh, his bones. He's rotten. And he doesn't have pain. Okay? See who he's talking about? I would, if I didn't understand something, I said, Lord, you always taught me. Yeah. What does this mean? I have seen being challenged in a Bible study and I said something that was good enough for them because they didn't know better. But I knew I did wrong. I knew what I said was not right. I went home and I could not only wait. I went to the back at that, that garage there. I, I had a place in the back when we first got married. I had a place in the back that I would go talk to them for. And I said, Lord, I said something today. It's, I'm not feeling good about it. It's not the right. But I don't know what it means. I know they accepted it. But I know it's not right. And I want you to forgive me, but you've always taught me. You show me. And all of a sudden, bang, you showed it to me. Wow. That, you know what it is? When you don't have an answer and you've got nobody around to help you, a gifted teacher, you go to him. Say, Lord, and don't leave until he, don't leave it until he shows you what it means. Don't leave it. You know, keep on. Me, me, he, he answered me speedily. I, oh, when the first time he did that, I just was so, I could not, I could have never figured it out by myself. And this is a verse that would be hard to understand too. Lots of it. Okay, but I'm just showing you. And by me talking like that, you know what that is going to do to you? It will show you how to study the Word of God. Yeah. Yeah. Because I believe that. Is the last verse anyway. His son come to honor him and he knows it not. Is it, is it making sense to you? Yeah. yeah. And they are brought low, but he perceives them not. They are brought to the grave room and he's low, but he doesn't perceive them. But his flesh upon him, though it's written, but his flesh is the person that is standing. Having the, but his flesh upon him shall have pain, and his soul within shall mourn. That's good. Did you get anything out of this? Alec, did you get anything out of this? I don't. You better be a Christian by the time I come back here. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about then? I can't. I can't. You're not supposed to challenge me. The dead are in the ground. I know that until judgment. They're not judged and go to heaven or hell. But you, like, I know that you've seen the spirit leave the body. Yeah. And then okay. Good spirit, question. Where did it go? Where did it go? Yeah. First Corinthians, chapter four, verse thirteen, and one place in the Old Testament. The Bible said the spirit. The spirit. The inner man. Yeah. 
goes back to God. But then I'll go to the New Testament. The New Testament tells us that God, Christ, when he comes back, he's going to bring them with him. In verse 13 of Matthew, of uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. He's, yeah, 13 to 18, but it's, he says, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning the ones that are dead, the ones that are sleeping. If we believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again, you know what? The only hope you have is because Jesus Christ rose again. If Jesus Christ rose again, didn't rise, you're still in your sin. All this is, let's go to Hawaii and kick some sand on the beach of Waikiki and smoke pot. Okay? Okay. It would all be for nothing. But because Jesus Christ rose from the dead, we have that hope in Him. Okay, did I answer your question? And if not, you said we come back with Him, but in the meantime, okay, when so you, I, we're not judged. So the spirit that leaves the body, where are they? Just the the spirit that leaves the body. Yeah. The Bible said, when you die, the spirit goes back to God. Okay. Where is it? I haven't been there yet. Yeah, and we're still not aware of anything, even in the spirit. It's just. I'm not so sure of that. I, that you, I don't think so. But if I had to show you a verse, I, I'd have to look for a while. So right now I'll leave it like that. Yeah. I believe that because of the, all the verse that says this, yeah. David died and he was buried. Yeah. And we know that David was a patriarch. Yeah. Uh, the early church, everyone that died. And in the New Testament, now we're under, he said in 1 Corinthians, and you know what? Read 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The whole chapter talks about the resurrection. It talks about Jesus Christ, how he died. And he's the first fruit of them that sleep. That's right, yeah. Jesus is the first one to be resurrected from the dead. And then we, which are Christ, are is coming. Yeah. Uh, th this is our, that's good. The, Jesus Christ, the first fruit. And then the rest, they that are Christ are is coming. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the, 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 the verse, and that you, uh, you'll probably have a hard time with that, but let Ed explain it to you or wait till I come back. Lazarus and the, uh, the Lazarus. That's one verse by itself that makes no sense. If you know how the Bible was written to begin with, bunch of, and somebody was watching over you, and you put one thing wrong, they was thrown away. Because the, 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 the parable of Lazarus, that's the only place in the whole Bible that says that. In hell, he lifted up his eye. Hell is not made yet. Can you send somebody to uh, bring me some water to cool my tongue? The tongue is in the grave and is rotten. Yeah. That makes no sense. But one guy said, I never thought I would hear you say that. Well, I said, let it be the first time. That, and then in Peter it says, no, scripture, no prophecy of scriptures are given by any private interpretation. So that means you cannot take one verse and make a doctrine out of it. And that's what the, church, the churches have done. When hundreds of verses that says when you die, you go to the grave. And when Christ comes back, the dead in Christ will rise first. Right, yeah. And he's going to bring them with him. So they're with him. But to tell you they're playing guitar, no. They're waiting for the resurrection yeah. because of this verse here. They that are Christ are is coming. So you will resurrect Christ the first fruit of the dead. That means he's the first one. Church don't believe that. Bring them to me. Christ the first fruit of the dead. Then they that are Christ when Christ comes back. If you believe what Ed's going to preach and what I teach you, it will, you can change but it'll change your life. Yeah. I'll tell you, that will really change you. You won't have to pretend you're a Christian. You will be one. And people will see it. One of the verses that you near where you're using, Acts 2 verse 34 says, what? says Acts 2 verse 34 yeah. says, For David is not ascended into the heavens. Yeah. Well, I read that today, yeah. You didn't. 
You oh, read, I didn't. You read just before it. That's why. Oh, okay, up. okay. Right there it says David is not in heaven. Yeah. Has not ascended to heaven. He was. He died and was buried. I said yeah, that today. You said that, but you didn't say the second part. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> David died and was buried. Yeah. yeah, so the spirit goes to be with God, but it's not like there's The dead goes to the grave, and yeah. that dead person is never resurrected. Yeah. Never. Never. You're done with it. Yeah. That's why, that's why you're not going to give account for your sin. Mm -hmm. Because he paid for your sin, and you're going to, to the ground. Yeah. There's nothing to pay for. Yeah. He's paid for it, and because of that, your body is not going to heaven, it's going to the ground. Yeah. That's a hell of a price to pay. You see? <clears throat> Dead. People have such a hard time to understand. There is a, you know what? I have, I gotta put it this way, it's hard for you. In my book that's coming out, there's, you're gonna have questions, but you're not gonna be able to ask me because I'll be gone, and I'll make sure I don't answer my phone. <laughs> Uh, there's things that are hard to understand. There's things that are hard to understand. I mean, the eight people cannot grab a, a, a grab that. I have seen the inner man of some people. Not your flesh. I've seen the inner man come out of the flesh. And listen, do yourself a favor. Read First Corinthians chapter 15, verse. Around the whole chapter, bro, bro, he said, How are the dead raised? And it, with what body do they come from? He explains everything how it's going to happen. The one that died is not going to be the one that's going to be. Mm -hmm. And he repeats himself like I, I used to stutter all the time. What? Where <clears throat> does the spirit of the unbelievers go? To hell and burn forever like a piece of bacon. Right. No. <laughs> No, 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 no. The spirit of the dead are also waiting somewhere because there's a great day of judgment, and the God will tell the church, and the church will order the angel bind them and throw them in the fire. And now that is not the the death of the flesh; that's the death of the spirit, and it's called the second death. Did you know I went to church? To different church all my life, I had never heard about the second death. Mm -hmm. The second death, a pastor said to me, he says, Adam, Dorchuk, jo uh, Walter, he said, the death of the soul, no, he said, the second death, is it the death of the soul? I said, absolutely. He says, fear not him that can kill your body. But fear him that is able to destroy both your body and your inner man. Your inner man, only God can destroy it for the children that are disobedient. There's so much to learn. Like for you. But come. Keep coming. You're going to keep learning. And you know what? I'm blessed when I see the children of God growing. <coughs> Any question? Any more questions? But Deborah, here's a thought. We have a just God. If that unbeliever has never heard the gospel, there's going to be a time where there's, there's going to be a chance. There's going to be yeah. a chance for that one that doesn't know will know. Will hear the gospel. Because God is so good. He doesn't want anybody to perish. Yeah. So they're going to have a chance. They have to. Otherwise, the God that I know is not the God that I know. But See? because he's good, okay, that's good, there's got to be a chance. See, that's very good what she just said. Listen to what God says. The church tells you, you didn't give your heart to Jesus, you're going to hell and you're going to burn. Mm -hmm. That's not true. First of all, keep your heart. You need it. I've always said that. But hear this verse instead. God is not willing that any would perish. The word perish does not mean eternal life in hell. It means fini. God is not willing that any would perish, but all would come to repentance. And that will happen to your mom and dad, to your grandfather that don't know God. The church tells you, or oh, they're going to hell and they're going to burn. That's a lie. Yeah. God is not willing that any should perish, but all would come to repentance. If those parents never had a chance, 
God's going to throw them in hell. Like, come on. But God, the bright, when the, that's where the, the, the children of the kingdom will know God from sea to sea. They will get to know God because they never had a chance. And they will have a chance. That's important to know. Some people say, well, what? I didn't, I've had that in my life. My, my grandmother, I love her. She was not born again like I am. And what's going to happen to her? They tell me she's going to hell. And she liked to give me cookie. <coughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? And they have, and the other side of their mouth, they have to nerve the nerve to say, oh, but God is love. God loves you. He's going to hold you by the leg and look at the hell. He says, you know what? I love you. And open his hand. And on the way down, he's telling you how much he loves you. Only idiots believe God. Because you don't know the word of God, you talk like that. God is, doesn't want any to be, even though you don't believe you know what? I will give you a chance, but some say, well, yeah, but they had a chance. I spoke to them. What you spoke to them about is not the gospel. So they never had a chance. So God is going to give you a chance. The, the God that they have, I don't want not. Listen to me. The God that people have, I don't want nothing to do with that God. Remember, in the Bible tells us, there's lots of gods. There's lots of gods. But to me, there's just one. The one that works for me, that's the one I'm, I'm talking to, that's the one I'm going to serve. That's the one I love. That's the one that is real. That's the one that is my father, is the author and the finisher of my feet. That's the one I want. Not the God that you that wants to burn you every time you turn the corner. See, they don't know God. And every one of you eh, that you speak in the future, and you're going to speak about, uh, people are going to ask you, what happened to my loved one? They didn't know God. Well, most likely the one that's telling you that don't know God either. Because if you knew God, he wouldn't ask you that question. But talk. Don't condemn him. Give him hope. You know? Everybody's going to have a chance. And I mean, I know people that never had a chance and the gospel they heard is not true so that's not the gospel the bible said this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world as a witness unto all men and then shall the end come if that is now then he's not coming back for another thousand years but the gospel will be preached in the millennium okay any more question that you want to torment me with give an answer and hope of what lies within you but somebody asks you a question, be at the place. Lord, take me to the place where I can answer the question. Instead of saying, well, I don't know about you, but uh, I need to get rid of you. I think that happened to you. That you were rejected when you started to ask questions. Was it true, true or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. And I know because that happened to me. You all stand up now. Bow, you close and pray.